Why don't you? Thank you, Chris. Hi, uh, everyone. Um, instead of uh, saying my full name, just call me King, K E N G. Right, so I'm a data journalist. I also do data journalism training for journalists and newsrooms. But tonight, um, what I'm going to talk about is more about my capacity as a competition officer for the Data Journalism Awards 2019. So I'm going to showcase three projects that showcase, um, demonstrates how journalists can use technology to tell stories. The first one is called Extra Poll. So Extra Poll um, is done by a team called We Do Data based in Paris. It is a augmented reality apps um, that helps you to know more about the French elections in 2017. So what happens is that users can just download the apps and then point the apps at candidate's poster and it will turn the posters uh, into a animated data visualizations that shows you information about the candidates. So the information related to candidates, uh, to those candidates, uh, were updated every day. So for example, uh, first day you might be able to see how many elections this candidate has won, how many uh, he has lost, and the next day you might be able to see uh, how many books you know, they have sold, and how are they Googled from abroad, and the other information uh, about the candidates. Then the second project is called Roads to Nowhere. It was uh, done by a journalist uh, by the name of Johnny Miller uh, from African Drone, but it was published in The Guardian. So this report used uh, drone footages, satellite images, and historical images to investigate um, how the construction of infrastructure in the US, uh, for example, uh, is the interstate highway. Uh, has disenfranchised this African-American communities in different cities. So this highway is called State Road 40. From this satellite image, you can see that it literally cuts the city of West Baltimore into half. And forcing a lot of families, businesses, even churches to relocate to another, uh, to a different um, location. So here is a very smart use of drone footage. So from this angle, you can see that the abandoned building on the right-hand side is totally empty inside. It's an empty shell, right? And this is a historical um, photo showing the once vibrant, vibrant black neighborhood um, called Black Bottom in Detroit, Detroit. Before the construction of highways in the 1950s. And this is how it looks like today. So the whole neighborhood has been cleared to give way for the constructions of two um, highways. The next um, area shot was um, showing, okay, this is showing another neighborhood in Richmond, Virginia. So it, it, the, sep the same thing happened they, there, you know, they, they, they constructed a highway, but because of local resistance, they have to bend the highway around the church. The building in the, on the right hand uh, up above is the church. So the last story is from BuzzFeed News. I think many of you might have seen this story before. So this is an, this is an in investigation that used a machine learning algorithm to find hidden spy planes in the US. They have made their codes public uh, on GitHub. So what they did was they fit the algorithms with the flight characteristics of almost 100 uh, of, of two different groups of planes. So the first group is the civilian planes from FBI and the Department of Home Security. The second group is just randomly picked planes. And you can see that the flight characteristics of spy planes is very different. They fly in circles repeatedly. They also fly back and forth, back and forth uh, at borders. So what happened is that the algorithm is able, when, they when the algorithm receives enough data, it is able to differentiate between spy planes and conventional planes. And then, they fit, again, they fed the algorithm with a huge number of flight tracking data from the website Flight, da flight Radar 24. So the algorithm was able to identify spy planes that registered as other types of planes in order to hide their activities. So these three data journalism projects are just part of the 630 entries that we received last year uh, for the Data Journalism Awards. Um, none of them actually won any top prizes 
uh, from the awards. But the awards is a very good platform to introduce your data projects to a wider international audience. So if you or your colleague have some really cool data-driven projects, uh, please submit them as soon as, as possible because our deadline is April 7th. And you have, the submission is totally free. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to come and talk to me later. Thank you.